talk about Billy Wagner. Cool. Love. Him. Here's the list of predominant relievers that are in the Hall of Fame. So the guys that spent the overwhelming majority of their career as relievers that are in the Hall of Fame. Mariano Rivera, Trevor Hoffman, Hoyt Wilhelm, Goose Gossage, Raleigh Fingers, Lee Smith, Bruce Souter. Of the 267 former players enshrined, there are seven relievers. I think Billy Wagner should be the eighth. He's got the sixth most saves in MLB history. He was a seven-time All-Star. He had two top six Cy Young finishes, which shows that he was overwhelmingly dominant. He had two years where he received MVP votes as a closer, and he struck out 11.9 guys per nine innings over the course of his career. His problem is innings accumulation. Billy Wagner and his 903 career innings would make him the third guy ever enshrined with under 1,000 innings of work. The other two are Hilton Smith and Leon Day, who both got in via the Veterans Committee. But I want you to think about when this guy racked up the accolades to even be considered for nomination. He played from 1995 to 2010. That was the steroid era, folks. These dudes juiced out of their freaking minds are getting 101 blown by their shoulders by 5'10 Billy Wagner. I think Billy Wagner's a Hall of Famer. I'm going to go a step further. Billy Wagner is the second best reliever of all time. Wow. Better than Hoffman? Maybe not in terms of accumulation, just in terms of the total amount of saves, the number of years. But if I want a reliever in there, outside of Mariano Rivera, to close out a ninth, it's Billy Wagner. I think so, too. Damn, I so, think so, too. Listen to this. And listen to this. So in 2000, he had an ERA of 6.18 and six saves in 27 innings. He was like hurt that year. We're going to discount that. Never an ERA above 285 in any season. He was so fucking good. So good. My year in, Billy Wagner. year right. out till the end of his career. 2010, his last year with the Braves, 37 saves with a 1 4 3 ERA, 104 strikeouts in 69 innings. His last year, dude. What the hell? This guy, like, he was, you know, if you were too small, if you were in Little League and you were too small and you wanted to be a pitcher, you know, if you were built like, Jack Leiter or Marcus Stroman right now you're mm -hmm. growing up and you're watching Billy Wagner 5'10 roll out of the pen he was a skinny 5'10 too it's not like he was built like a bulldozing running back 5'10 220 or anything like Trevor Rosenthal was built I'm talking 5'10 180 Billy Wagner he just looked like a random dude you plucked out of the stands and threw a jersey on him and then 101's coming at your face yep he was he was the baddest motherfucker alive when we got to the ninth inning in the steroid era. Think about in that. I mean, you've got guys. Era. That's why. Right? You've got the guys with I... forearms like Popeye. Sorry. You've got guys with forearms like Popeye coming up. And, and there are globs of chaw just coming out of their mouth. It feels like a scene from Angels in the Outfield, right? When the, just a burly man is coming up to the plate. And you've got this little jabron on the hill. And he's <laughs> like, oh, my God, you have no idea what's coming right now. And then it just jumps on you. The way that he commanded a game mentally in the ninth inning is unlike anything people have seen aside from Rivera and Hoffman in recent memory. So we ranked our top five favorite players of all time on JustBaseball.com. You can hear, listen to the reasoning, not listen, you can read our reasoning on JustBaseball.com and Pedro Martinez made my top five. And the reason why I think Pedro Martinez is the greatest pitcher of all time was not only do his general statistics stack up with the greats, but he was doing it in the hardest era to pitch in in Major League history when you think about the steroid era. So that's why, for me, Pedro Martinez is the goat of pitching. Billy Wagner is in that same exact boat. The greatest, not the greatest, the second greatest reliever of all time. And in terms of just straight dominance, there were times where, uh, no, 
No, not better mo. No, I was gonna maybe try and wrap. Not no, better mo. Come on. Just, now. but besides Mo, <laughs> this is the dude, Billy Wagner, throwing right here, right in the right in the socket, right in your ear, like a catcher, like a piss missile from home to second base. Except it's on the mound from a five ten lefty, and then he adds in the wipeout slider. He was a dog, freaking dog. It, it makes me smile ear to ear just hearing you say that because, like, that was a guy that you – he was appointment television. And I think that the Hall of Fame – like, if I had a ballot, I would be voting on guys that I thought were appointment television. That's that's the case, right? That's that's the greatest of all time argument there. I got to watch Alabama football. I'm going to be pissed if I don't see a Bama game because I got to see Nick Saban at work. I just watched mm-hmm. LeBron play the Bulls last night because I got to see LeBron at work. I got to see Kevin Durant at work. I've got to see Brady at work on Sunday night, even though he sucked. Like, that's the thing. You know what I mean? When you're watching yeah. Billy Wagner, you knew it at the end of his career. When Billy Wagner was a Met, you said, I'm seeing something right now that doesn't come around too often. And, and that thought alone is enough for me to give you consideration. And 903 innings. It's not enough for anybody but Billy Wagner. Exactly. Like you have to be one of the greatest relievers of all time. And, he and you is just called him the second best reliever of all time. Wow. Andy and now you could make the argument for Hoffman. You could. And yeah. I get that. But I like Billy. I like Billy more. 